you might want to watch this before considering an RTX 4090 and did AMD just destroy DLSS? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by InnoCN and their brand new 15K 1F monitor. The 15K 1F is a 15.6 inch OLED Full HD 60Hz 1 millisecond response time portable monitor capable of displaying 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut, 100,000 to 1 contrast ratio, and up to 400 nits of brightness. Not only that, but it has great connectivity featuring HDMI, Type-C, and USB ports on board, which makes it a great option for a wide range of devices. Plus, the included stand works great holding it in the perfect position for gaming on the go. So if you're looking for what I would consider to be the best portable display on the market, be sure to click the link in the description below to find out more. So the RTX 40 series is rumored to be revealed in September of this year and the first cards you'll likely be able to get your hands on will be the RTX 4090, 4080, and 4070. And for those of you out there who are looking to run something crazy like 4K 240Hz or even 8K, the 4090 will probably be fast enough to finally achieve such ludicrous demands, but you might not want to buy it anyway, and here's why. So not only is the price of the RTX 4090 likely to be absolutely ludicrous as I'm expecting anywhere from $1.8,000 all the way to in excess of $2,000, but on top of that, we're also going to have to keep in mind the absolutely absurd power requirements that the RTX 4090 is likely going to have. I mean, there have been rumors going around for some time that the RTX 4090 could be anywhere from like 500 watts all the way up to like 800 watts in terms of its power, and you know, just recently we got even more concrete information that yes, it is very likely that the RTX 4090 is going to draw in absolutely just absurd amount of power. Now, this information comes from the leaker comp 7 Kimi over on Twitter, and here's what he had to say about the RTX 4090 when it comes to its power requirements. Quote, someone told me the XX90 with 600 watt TGP has been confirmed. I think it's too early to talk about it. And then we got another quote from another leaker over on Twitter, Graymon55, and here's what he had to say about the RTX 40 series. Quote, 4080, 450 watts, 4090, 600 watts, 4090 Ti, 800 watts plus question mark question mark no 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 all right so i think we definitely need to talk about this because 800 watts plus is getting to a point where it's just so absolutely ridiculous that it's something that i have a hard time even like grasping if you don't have any idea of what like 800 watts is like i mean turn on like a thousand watt space heater in your room and try and game i mean it's that level of absolute absurdity it's just going to be so hot in your room while you're gaming you're definitely going to have to have an ac going if that's going to be the case you're definitely going to have to have your door open otherwise it'll just get so sweaty and hot in the summer you won't be able to stand it. I mean, personally, I am someone who has run a 1000 watt BIOS on an RTX 3090 while trying to go ahead and set some records. And I can tell you guys that it definitely gets toasty. It's ridiculous. You can really only efficiently cool it on water. Now, can you cool something like 600 watts on air? Yes, you absolutely could. If they went ahead and they made basically a redesign of the RTX 3090 cooler, that cooler is absolutely amazing. If they just basically increase the fin density, if they make sure that the contact from the cold plate is very very good they use something like liquid metal they go ahead and use thermal putty for the memory then yes they could go ahead and cool something like 600 watts so to me i think 600 watts is going to be probably the absolute limit as to what you know nvidia can really actually push on these gpus we just have to keep in mind that there comes a point where the efficiency has been thrown so far out the window that it just no longer makes any sense whatsoever and for me 600 watts is definitely the absolute limit if you go any further beyond that you're really going to have to start talking about water cooling as being a necessity and this is something that just makes things even more costly. It makes it a lot harder to ship the items to you. It makes it so that RMAs are worse. It makes it so that potentially down the line, they break down earlier if the uh, actual cooler itself, maybe the pump on the cooler goes out. It, it just makes it a whole lot more complicated. And in my opinion, it makes no sense whatsoever to ship a card with 800 watts. Now, am I saying that it's impossible? Could NVIDIA not do it? No, it's not impossible. Anything is possible. But to me, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say that I think if there is a card that's quote unquote being leaked, potentially drawing up to 800 watts, I think you have to keep in mind up to 800 watts. Maybe for a very small peak, you'll see it just barely touch 800 watts, kind of like the RTX 3090. Some models of that will touch up to 600 watts for a split second. Now, is it consistently drawing 600 watts? No, and I don't think that's gonna be the case for the 4090 or 4090 Ti or even Titan either. I think personally what you're gonna see is like an RTX 4080 Ti will consistently draw maybe a little over 400 watts 
watts, maybe 450 watts. I think the RTX 4090 will go ahead and maybe draw 500 plus watts, and then maybe the 4090 Ti or Titan will consistently draw over 500 watts. That's something that I do actually expect to see. Anything beyond that is starting to really, really push the limits. 800 watts is ridiculous. I don't think you're going to see it again. It could happen, but I just don't see it happening. It's just absurd. With that being said, if it does end up drawing 800 watts, if I were you, I would definitely reconsider maybe purchasing an RTX 4090. I know that for me personally, I'm a little bit more interested in something like the RTX 480 because personally, I am expecting it to be on the 103 die this time around, and that die is going to have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is going to be a very nice amount of video memory to have. It's also going to be a massive improvement in terms of performance. I'm expecting it to be anywhere from like 40 to 50% faster than the RTX 3080, so a massive improvement. I'm not really personally for what resolution and frame rate I run gonna need anything faster than a 4080 but if you are someone who's gonna need something faster than a 4080 uh, if you're looking at something that's gonna be on the 102 die uh, yeah maybe you're gonna have to reconsider because you know 600 watts maybe I could see you know handling that again I've run a thousand watt BIOS I know what it's like but anything over 600 watts for me personally is gonna be a hard pass but now let's go ahead and talk about our next topic did AMD finally kill DLSS so this information comes from videocards.com it's in regards to the FSR 2.0 which apparently is going to be coming out fairly soon well let's go ahead and read what they had to say about it and then I'll give you my thoughts on it so according to video cards they say quote AMD is announcing its FSR 2.0 technology on March 17th this announcement comes six days ahead of the official GDC 2022 showcase where next generation upscaling technology will be discussed they then go on to say the FSR 2.0 will offer better image quality in all presets and resolutions but AMD does not confirm anything about performance benefits this technology will be based on temporal data, and it will feature optimized anti-aliasing. In this regard, it will be a proper competitor for NVIDIA DLSS 2.0. So yeah, that's definitely some great news. I mean, any competition that we can get between NVIDIA and AMD is something that I will definitely root for, and honestly, DLSS is such an amazing technology, and I was really hopeful for FSR, as it is something that's basically an open-source DLSS, but unfortunately, the first iteration of FSR ended up not being quite as good as DLSS. So if if they can go ahead and improve upon FSR and continue to allow all GPUs to use it, this is just going to be a great thing for gamers as it means that if you're someone who can't quite run that 4K resolution on your 4K display and you want a higher refresh rate or whatever resolution that you're playing on, you can go ahead and use FSR 2.0 to go ahead and upscale from a lower resolution without having to deal with that massive hit uh, to the visual fidelity that you would get if you ran something like, uh, for example, 1440p on a 4K display because if you are someone in in the past who's ever done anything like that you'll know that running a non-native resolution looks really really bad whereas if you use something like DLSS or FSR 2.0 that's going to be coming out here it's actually going to make it look much much better on your display as you are technically running the native resolution still it's just the original data is being grabbed from a lower resolution so overall looks much much better it looks much cleaner and in some cases with DLSS 2.0 I have seen it actually looking better on certain objects so that's actually some very interesting stuff to see here but again this is coming out actually very very soon here and I can't wait to see what they have to show off because this is just going to be an awesome thing for gamers all around the world but hey that's just what I think how much power do you think the RTX 4090 is really going to draw let me know your guys thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so AMD and Nvidia get more stock also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed.